Hello everyone, welcome back to Veterinary Small Talks, uh, a continuing veterinary education program hosted by the Indian Veterinary Association at Maglam Unit. Today, the part 2 of FIP, the diagnosis and the treatment of FIP. So in the last talk about, about FIP, we already discussed about the Revolta test, which is a very simple and cost-effective test to differentiate an exudate and a transudate. So today we are going to discuss the other classical biochemical findings associated with the FIP which helps to differentiate FIP. FIP mostly being a disease of young purebred cats that are especially kept in multi-cat situation and indoors. Uh, the stress plays a major factor in the onset of the disease. Also the purebred cats lack what we call the immune hybrid vigor and a typical indoor cat cat is more viral load than the uh, other cats which are outdoors so that also plays a major role uh, clinically we can expect symptoms like uh, waxing and waning fever sudden lethargy and anorexia there will be a dramatic and sudden weight loss and uh, of course there are like peculiar uh, eye changes that are spe specific to the FIP the fluid buildup in the abdomen may not be initially uh, noticed by the owner and as a clinician uh, it is always uh, good to use an ultrasound to get any anechoic areas in the abdomen and to see if there is any fluid inside. One of the most uh, important biochemical finding is an elevated serum globulin level and it will be typically greater than 5.1 grams per deciliter and we get this in almost 90% of the cases this is mostly due to the gamma globulin production because as a part of the heavy immune response against the macrophage infected virus we would also have a low albumin level so as a result the A by G ratio the albumin globulin ratio in the blood will be lower it will be typically less than 0.6 uh, if we see the protein content of the effusion, uh, we can see that it is greater than 3.5 grams per deciliter and with a very uh, low cell count. So we already spoke about how uh, to test the effusion using acetic acid that is the Revolta test and to see if the effusion is uh, a transudate or an exudate. So the FIP effusion is always uh, an exudate because of the high protein content. Then uh, we can see uh, slight jaundice, uh, which means there will be a mild elevated bilirubin in the blood. But what makes this special is that the jaundice occurs without any dramatic increase in the liver enzymes. There can also be a non-regenerative anemia and a lymphopenia in the CBC. Uh, which is uh, not that specific and which just uh, says that it is a chronic disease. And uh, besides all this, there are uh, of course definitive diagnostic tests like uh, immunocytochemistry of the effusion uh, to see the virus infected macrophages and then there is PCR. But all these are not economical and not practical in a clinical setup so we would always depend upon the straightforward biochemical test to diagnose the FIP. Uh, there are some diseases to consider in your differential list which kind of mimics the FIP in some way or the other. Uh, the first one is feline toxoplasmosis which can cause uveitis, self-limiting diarrhea, jaundice and dyspnea similar to the FIP. But in toxo there won't be any hyperglobulinemia or there won't be a low A by G ratio. Uh, besides the toxoplasmosis can be diagnosed with a uh, toxoplasma Ig titer test so in that way we can differentiate from FIP then there is lymphocytic cholangitis which can cause a high protein effusion in the abdomen which uh, could also give a positive Revolta test and uh, there can also be jaundice in lymphocytic cholangitis but because it's a case of cholangitis, there won't, there will be a high ALP and GGT, alkaline phosphatase and gamma glutamyl transferase. Whereas in FIP, uh, there won't be any dramatic change in ALP and GGT. Uh, another disease is septic peritonitis, 
which can cause a positive reval status because the septic peritonitis causes a fluid accumulation in the abdomen which is an exudate but uh, if we examine the exudate of septic peritonitis uh, there will be a very high cell count with bacteria and besides there will be symptoms related to the sepsis Uh, another disease would be abdominal neoplas neoplasms uh, like lymphoma but uh, considering the age of the animal uh, usually these neoplasms occur in cats aged greater than 10 years and mostly the FIP is a disease of young cats but of course to definitely confirm the disease we would have to go for uh, cytology uh, there is pancreatitis that can cause uh, weight loss, anorexia, jaundice, but uh, uh, it can be easily diagnosed with a test called PLI. In pyothorax, the effusion shows a high cell count and degenerate neutrophils, and it can also show intracellular bacteria, thus, we can differentiate that too. In congestive heart failure, uh, of course, there will be dyspnea and pleural effusion. Uh, but uh, peritoneal effusion is comparatively rare in a cat with congestive heart failure and uh, of course there won't be any fever uh, or any type of uh, uh, waxing and waning fever in a congestive heart failure and also there is a possibility of a heart murmur now uh, coming to the treatment part of FIP before uh, 2021 FIP was considered a very deadly disease, a very terminal disease and this was one of the most common cause of euthanizing the kittens throughout the world. But uh, due to some research developments after 2021, uh, right now this disease is being treated very well throughout the world. Uh, first we will see some treatment options uh, before the advent of the newer drugs. Previously it was treated with prednisolone. FIP being a disease involving the host immunity, uh, it was thought that uh, suppressing the host immune response would improve the clinical outcome of the patient and improve the clinical, uh, improve the food intake of the patient. So prednisolone was given at 1 to 2 mg per kg uh, as a long term treatment. Cyclosporine was also tried but of course uh, this was uh, just a temporary solution. Then there was a treatment involving omega interferons uh, along with the low dose prednisolones which is called as the Shida's protocol. That was mostly given for FUC or wet form of FIP. Then there was a treatment involving the polyprenyl immunostimulant PPI uh, that was given for non-FUC form of FIP. But mostly uh, both the above treatments had the disadvantage of high cost involved and long term of therapy and also uh, incomplete remission of the disease. Uh, Dr. Neil Pedersen, uh, a professor in UC Davis, California, developed a drug called GS441524 with a very high potency against the FIP virus. And it was found to be a brilliant uh, discovery. But uh, unluckily for us, this drug was similar to a drug called as remdesivir which is a drug used to treat human Ebola and COVID-19. So remdesivir is actually a pro-drug to GS441524 and uh, GS5734. So what happened is there was a patent issue and the company manufacturing rem Remdesivir uh, called as uh, Gilead and Merck, they were involved in the human manufacture of Remdesivir because of the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic and there was no veterinary manufacturer uh, of Remdesivir or the GS. As a result of all these patent confusions, the cat owners could not wait much and they united online through different Facebook groups and they uh, assigned, uh, they gave contract to so many companies, pharmaceutical companies in China to manufacture the GS molecule and so these uh, drugs similar to the GS441524 
you know, start to come into the black market and people um, with assistance of course started to use this drug as subcutaneous and oral forms so what happened is kind of a citizen medicine where people took up the molecule and then uh, made companies to manufacture these drug for them by august 2021 uh, remdesivir became available in the uk and australia and uh, the company involved was Bova Australia and Bova UK. They manufactured the veterinary uh, version of the remdesivir drug and then so it became legal in those countries to use remdesivir in, in cats. But uh, in United States it was not FDA approved at that time. Veterinarians in India and New Zealand, also South Africa and some parts of Euros, Europe started to use the drug from human supplies of remdesivir and thus uh, treatment is going on in different versions throughout different parts of the world uh, one effective treatment protocol that is uh, being recommended by an article that came out of the University of Sydney is uh, a two-stage treatment where there is an injection stage of starting the remdesivir injection and then there is a consolidation stage where after two weeks of injectable remdesivir uh, the patients are swapped to the GS441524 tablets. So the dose and the duration is dependent upon what stage the disease is. Uh, so typically for a wet form of FIP uh, the dose would be 10 to 12 mg per kg and uh, if there is an ocular involvement, the dose would be higher and if there is a neurological involvement, uh, the dose of remdesivir would be even higher. Uh, the response to the treatment was evaluated based on the A by G ratio or a reduction in the amount of gamma globulins and of course the uh, decrease or reduction in the abdominal effusion. Um, improvement in the breathing that is reduction of dyspnea signs and of course the improvement of the clinical uh, neurological signs and improvement in the ocular signs so this was uh, given for 10 weeks the oral gs form was given for 10 weeks and the initial induction uh, rem remdesivir injection iv or subcut was given for two weeks so this total treatment mostly involved 10 plus two weeks uh, there was an alternative treatment protocol that uh, came out in an article from Royal Veterinary College London. They had uh, a protocol where 15 mg per kg of remdesivir was given intravenously uh, daily for 7 days and that will that is supposed to cause a reduction in the effusion and an improvement in the patient's clinical signs. Uh, when the patient starts taking food, it was followed by 84 days of 10 mg per kick subcut of remdesivir. Uh, depending upon the clinical presentation, it is good to do a thoracocentesis if there is a pleural effusion in addition to a peritoneal effusion. So it is better to remove some fluid from the thorax uh, to ease the breathing of the patient and to give some oxygen if needed and then stabilize the patient. And then once it is stabilized, think about the antiviral therapy also it is very important to get the clients to sign an informed consent form when using any drug off label thank you everyone for watching this video if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe to this youtube channel thank you and bye bye